How can the scientific study of learning be relevant and helpful to educators in their day-to-day -day classroom activities? We asked researchers affiliated with Carnegie Mellon's Simon Initiative for their personal and disciplinary perspectives. Anyone who's an expert at what they do does things um, in response to the situation, in response to the environment, based on their accumulated knowledge. And they might make a lot of teaching moves um, automatically. An expert teacher may not think of it as collecting data and making a choice. They might just do things that seem like the most natural thing to do in the situation. That expert view is... Um, is sort of hiding a lot of tacit knowledge that the teacher has about um, what might work, what might not work, background knowledge about the student, this context, and so forth. And so one way to think about it is that the teacher is making a lot of moves and it feels like art, and maybe a lot of it is sort of implicit, in, in it's not explicit in their thinking, and maybe some of it is even very finely tuned to the contextual factors. So it seems like an art, but one way of thinking of the science is that it's sort of just trying to unpack all that and study it systematically so that we can see, is there something we can generalize from this other than when this teacher with this student in this context did that, it worked well. I had a friend uh, a number of years ago who was a professor in a business school. We went for lunch one day and I, I told him what I was working on. He said, oh, I flipped my classroom once. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, you know, tell me about it. What was, what was that like? And he's like, well, you know, they, I, read, I read some stuff and it sounded really cool. And so I recorded some videos and I put them online. And, you know, I had two TAs and it was just so much work to get the students doing the practice problems in class. And, you know, it really, it didn't work very well. The students hated it. My reviews plummeted. And, you know, it just wasn't worth it. I don't really understand what the hype's about. I asked him if he had gone to a to a center for teaching excellence, or if he had used any of that. There are, there are even a ton of articles in very accessible, you know, not peer-reviewed journals about these kinds of things. And he had, he had seen an article and then assumed that he, he knew what he needed to do there. And in fact, that assumption is there on the part of the researchers and the practitioners, the teachers, right? The, the assumption that we, we put together the theory we know the things that we need to know, and so we can just apply that. That that's all that it is, especially as faculty members who, who live in this realm of research, that all you really need to do is understand the problem and the problem solved. The fact that there's actually a, a lot of space in between those, those two steps, that there is a chasm there, is really difficult to communicate, let alone to bridge. We tend to make assumptions about what's challenging for students in our classrooms that aren't always right. You know, one thing I've found very effective, which I do try to employ in my own teaching, but I think it's pretty uh, not so hard to do, is I don't just make quizzes with a lot of questions on them. I systematically des design questions that are going to help me understand, say, why this question or problem is so hard. And I might have some hypothesis about it, right? And so I make another very similar version of that question, but it doesn't have the hard part in it, the hypothesized hard part, right? And so now I give the quiz, and if I'm right, then this problem's gonna be a lot harder than, than the other one. But it, it, it's really quite striking how often I'm not right. And, and I don't mean that as me, and anybody who does this, I think you, you'll, you'll find that at least half the time you may be right, but that means almost half the time you're wrong. Uh, and sometimes it's exactly the opposite in some of these kinds of studies that we've done. Well, one thing that I find in working with teachers, especially those who already kind of work to hone their craft, yeah. they think about teaching, they think about their students. And so this, sometimes you can think of learning science as giving them a language, and maybe it's a more formal language, but just giving them kind of, or some new labels or ideas for what they're already doing. So a lot of the work that we do, working with faculty, is to say, there's this body of work and there's kind of this model of how learning works that comes out of that set of results and ask teachers to respond to it and say, oh yeah, that could be an explanation 
for what's going on in my classroom. And so what it might do is it might take that, that expert teaching move that you make and give it an explanation, give it an underpinning. It might also prompt a teacher to say, hmm, I never thought of it that way. I wonder if I try this, if it would work better. And I think it's that experimentation and reflection on what happens afterward that is a really interesting part of what learning science can do for teachers.